Ah, it's a lot of onion. Um, hi, I'm Nathan. Voice It's Fire. Sing for Voice It's Fire. Um, I'm sitting in our bus, being interviewed apparently, and I was handed this new Chelsea Wolf album on vinyl because I'm a huge fan. Uh, Apocalypsis was one of my favorite albums. Um, and I look very much forward to listening to this on vinyl. I had just got it on download, so I haven't even gotten to listen to most of it. Um, but Chelsea Wolf steadily became one of my favorite artists uh, from her album Apocalypsis. Um, and it's hard to explain why, <laughs> other than I find it to be an amazing album. Her voice, the music, uh, the simplicity of it, but also the epicness of it. It's one of those things, though, that when someone asks, why do you like it? You usually go, well, just listen to it. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I just, I feel she's a brilliant artist and it's, it's nice to hear. Um, as far as being influenced by her, I mean, it was very recent that I found Chelsea Wolf. Um, and started listening to her, but she definitely played a big influence, not so much with Boyce That's Fire stuff, but with my other band that I have with my son called I'm Heresy, um, which is a lot more, well, it's funny because it's a lot more of a metal style band, so you wouldn't normally associate the two, but a lot of the stuff that we do in between, and there's a few songs that are more acoustic and atmospheric, a lot of that comes uh, from the inspiration of what I caught from what she does, hopefully without ripping it off, it's just more of a, it inspired me to think beyond heavy music and to think of music that's not necessarily heavy stereotypically, but in, in another realm it is. There's that sort of darkness and heaviness to it that makes it fit in with like metal and hardcore and things like that. So. I am a second-rate record collector. Uh, I am not your typical, our, our friend Gene that tours with us is hardcore record collector guy. Uh, me, I pick up stuff when I think it's worth it or cool. Uh, I like colored vinyl, things like that, double albums, things that, you know, things that are just cool to have. Of Like if I have an album that I really like that I listen to um, digitally, I usually go find like the cool packaging and stuff like that because I really do miss that from back in the day when bands spent a lot more time on the packaging and the art. Um, which speaking of, you know, downloads and stuff like that, I don't really pay much attention to illegal downloads and stuff like that. It doesn't bother me or make me happy. It does neither. It doesn't affect me. Um, if I ran a record label, I might care but I don't, so, I mean, I guess we sort of do with any hits, but I guess that was a dumb thing to say, yeah, I guess we do, but still, I mean, what does it really matter? I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do, and you can't police people or tell them what to do, and I honestly just don't care. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that made me get into Chelsea Wolf was the obvious influences um, and just sort of the scene that she seemed to be part of, uh, just this dark folk type of thing, like with King Dude, her, I, I couldn't even name any others other than obvious, obvious influences that they both have, uh, like Death in June, Current 93, uh, <clears throat> bands like that that started out out of the very early industrial period uh, with Throbbing Gristle, bands like that. Um, and then became something so wildly different and interesting. I, I, I really became infatuated with that scene because it, it was so, it was such a bizarre evolution uh, to go from heavy, crazy industrial stuff to a dark neo folk sort of thing, but in a way where it sort of made sense why they were doing it, you know? Um, and, and now these newer bands, like I said, King Dude, Chelsea Wolf, sort of following in those footsteps with that darker, atmospheric, heavy sort of folk that it's not what you think when you think folk, you know? Um, so just very interesting that, that someone's filling that legacy. You know? As far as guilty pleasures that I have uh, musically, 
let's say musically because I'm not talking about anything else. <laughs> um, I would say if we we're going to talk um, sort of in depth and with what I was just talking about, um, and on a more serious note, and then I'll get into the more funny stuff, is that same scene that I just spoke of, not so much with Chelsea Wolf and the newer, but with the older, like Death in June, things like that. There was always a strange sort of fascist like thing that went through a lot of those bands, and you have to be sort of careful sometimes with which ones you listen to, because all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, what am I listening to? Like, you know what I mean? Like, at, some of them, like, they play with a little bit for effect I feel or like symbolism and thing and then some of the bands it's like oh I shouldn't be listening to this this is, this is a little weird all right they're, they're a little too uh, <laughs> you know. so I uh, you know it's uh, those are those are some of those bands you know and I, I won't list any of them people can find out for themselves on that you know uh, but you know some of the bands I, I feel it's taken with a grain of salt and it's sort of more of a showmanship and sort of a an atmosphere thing than it is a real personal belief in some fucked up shit but uh but some of the bands whoo it's, <laughs> it's like you'll be reading through it and all of a sudden like oh this is not what i thought it was at all this is bad i should not have paid money for this but um but then on to a, a more funnier note and not supporting fascism <laughs> jesus um, uh some of my guilty pleasure i know one of my main ones is kelly clarkson i fucking love Kelly Clarkson. Amazing. And you can't judge until you see her live. Like, and I haven't, not live, I haven't seen her live, I've just seen her on TV playing live. Whoo! Like, fucking just intense. Like, just those parts on the album where she, like, really gets into it, when you see it live, it's like, oh no, she fucking means that. Like, it might be a dumb, catchy pop song, but she's there. You know what I mean? It's it's awesome. Um, and the shit's just catchy as hell. You can't escape it. It's awesome. Um, and then a uh, lesser, but still sort of a guilty pleasure, Lady Gaga, I like a lot. You know, I, I think that's lesser, though, because not every song is like, yes, you know what I mean? There's just some catchy stuff in there. But with Kelly Clarkson, like, she doesn't fail. She just, like, she kills it. So those, those would be, I think. 